Hello and welcome back to Tales Arcane. I'm Malcolm and this video is going to be a little bit more relaxed and uh, less edited than some of my, my normal videos. My plan is essentially to do uh, one kind of fully produced video every week. So, for example, my last fully produced video came out a few days ago and that was discussing tips for D&D combat. Uh, my next one will be coming out later in the, the coming week. So my idea is that in between those videos, I do something that's a little bit more relaxed, uh, absolutely no script, and minimal editing. So for example, I'll have almost no kind of background changes during this video. It would just be a kind of standard uh, image that appears behind me. And then if I need to illustrate anything, I'll have images come up for those specific moments, but not a continual moving slideshow, which is what I do for my more uh, sort of uh, regular videos or produced videos. I won't always do these in between videos, but whenever I have a free moment, I want to try to do this because it gives me a chance to talk about stuff which might not make it into a full length video. I won't always do these little in-between videos, but uh, whenever I can, I want to try to do so because I think it gives me a chance to talk about stuff which maybe wouldn't make it into a full-length video, but which could still be interesting to some of you. In this video, I'm going to talk about starting a new campaign uh, because I'm about to start a new campaign, and so I want to talk about the process I've gone through to prep for that. My first session for the new campaign is on Thursday, and I'm kind of putting the pieces together at the moment. And I thought I'd bring you guys into that process because it might spark some ideas for your own campaigns and at the very least it will show you the methodology I use when approaching this. Um, uh, of course, in the, the thumbnail and the title of this video, I'll probably say uh, something like uh, prepping a D&D &D campaign, but uh, these are tips that are applicable to any TTRPG. Uh, not tips, I'm not really doing tips here, I'm just talking about my own process, but the ideas that are in this video are applicable to any TTRPG campaign. Uh, so, let's talk about starting a new campaign. Um, we just finished our other campaign, which was, I think, finished about two weeks ago, and uh, the players are really just eager to power ahead. Uh, they've Most of them already had their characters prepared, so uh, I've been kind of thinking ahead to what the next campaign would be, and when basically the moment we finished our last session, they said, okay, what's everyone's availability for like next week? So now I'm, I'm rushing to get everything prepped for that. And uh, I, the, the first thing I did was work out the genre and the theme of the opening uh, setting of the campaign. I'm a great believer, I like a long campaign. I like a campaign that could span a year and a half, two years, that for me is ideal. And during that time, I'm a great believer in doing a lot of different genres in that process. So for example, in my last campaign, we started out in a very kind of classic wandering adventurer approach. Uh, about halfway through, we went into a slightly more kind of like horror themed element started to come in. Then we went into a more piratical thing. There was a lot of seafaring and sea battles. And then for the end of the campaign, we moved back towards a, a wandering adventurer's uh, classic kind of fantasy feel. Uh, with this campaign that I'm about to start, I want to do that even more. So my plan is essentially to start with each zone in the world that I'm designing having a different flavour to it. So for example, one might be a pirate themed area, one might be a sort of uh, renaissance kind of, uh, renaissance Italy, lots of political intrigue and so on. The idea being that when the players feel that it's time to get a new flavour or genre, they don't have to start a new campaign, they just catch the next airship out of the current area and go to uh, another part of the world and uh, everything carries over. That's the plan, we'll see how well that runs. So the first thing I had to do was decide on the, the genre. Um, the, after a chat with the players, everyone was leading towards quite a gothic horror approach, almost a kind of Barovia, but obviously a, a homebrew approach to it. And uh, not exactly Barovia, but like gothic uh, werewolves, vampires, bats flying through the, the moonlit skies, all that sort of stuff. I love that as a, as a genre, and I love the laying it on quite thick with that classic Dracula-esque feel. So that's what we're going with. So now I had uh, a clear idea of what the genre was going to be and uh, vague story ideas were popping into my head but nothing formalized so I started with creating a map um, and uh, I basically when I'm when I'm creating a map that's when I'm also coming up with story ideas because as I'm structuring the map I'm using incarnate obviously and I'm on incarnate I'm putting mountains down I'm putting down place names I'm trying to just make all the place names sound kind of spooky and horror themed and as I'm doing that I'm thinking about what could be happening in each of these places and what relationships the players and their characters could have over time to each of these areas. And so yeah, for the first 
sort of week of prep, I really just worked on this quite detailed regional map, which I hope should be appearing behind me, and I called it uh, the Duchy of Withervale, which I felt Withervale sounded mysterious and dark. Um, and of course, the thing is, this is a home game, so I'm not too fussed about it being super original, uh, play with the form, subvert expectations. No, I'm I'm going for something that feels really classic, and that's what my players are are excited for. So uh, initially, Withervale was my main focus, and I, as I was working on it, I try not to let my mind wander to other regions on the continent around the Duchy of Withervale. I try to just say. Let's imagine the whole campaign takes place here. Really fill it with dense content and landmarks. Uh, trying to make every day of travel have something in it. You know, I have a grid in the map so that I know what a day of travel is. And I try to make sure that in pretty much every square on that grid, there is a cave, a ruin, a town, a wayside tavern, something that the players are going to interact with, something that I can flesh out at a later date. Ah. This is decaf coffee because it's it's way too late to be drinking strong coffee. Um, but yeah, so that was the, the approach initially. Um, once I had a clear idea of the Duchy of Witherville, I decided that, that was going to be part of a larger continent because as I'm working on that, I'm thinking, okay, this is part of this sort of big patchwork of different genre-themed locales across a larger continent. So then I started designing a continent and I basically just mucked around on uh, Incarnate until I had what looked like a nice, slightly as uh, um, asymmetric layout for, for a continent and something there where I felt there was a lot of uh, diversity in the coastline and in the different shapes of the land masses on there. And uh, then I broke that all up with borders and slapped a cool sounding name onto each one. And as I put those names on, I did try to think about what those names kind of slightly suggested as we went south. I, I tried to create areas which, to my mind, had names slightly more reminiscent of sort of slightly Middle Eastern flavored names. Uh, going up north, I'm going for slightly more uh, Nordic flavored names and creating a very classic fantasy world in which the players will feel a real distinction between each area. Now, of course, that's not remotely realistic. Um, you know, if you, if you look at Europe, uh, Renaissance Italy uh, was not just an isolated blob. All, all the countries around the northern borders of Italy had a lot of overlap culturally with, um, with Italy at that time. But for, for the purposes of my fantasy world and my players' expectations, they're not going to mind if there's a very unnatural shift when they cross the border and there's a new culture and a new feeling to the game. So at this point, I've now got a, a continent and nested within that continent, I have the, the area that I've, I've kind of fleshed out a bit more. Now that is the only work I'm doing on the rest of the continent at this point. I have a few vague ideas for what will be in those other areas, uh, some of the cultural elements. Um, why I'm, I'm excited, I keep on mentioning Renaissance Italy because uh, on the map, High Vantress is going to be a sort of Renaissance Italy feel. It's going to be quite advanced technologically, almost closer to a sort of, maybe like the 1500s, 1600s, uh, while the other areas are a little bit more towards that more classic medieval feel. And uh, High Vantress will also have airships, and that allows the players to, when they're ready, if they want to, move quickly from Withervale into High Vantress, and then catch an airship from there to pretty much anywhere else on the map they want to go. Because uh, I, w I want to let them pick and choose where they go. Of course, there's also a ancient Greek area, which is the little island, um, the name of which I forget. I think it's Theseum or Theseus, but that will be appearing somewhere behind me at the moment. And at that point, I've done all the work I need to do outside of Withervale. Uh, I don't want to start prepping High Vantress in any depth until I know for a fact my players are actually going to go there. So in the meantime, all of my energy is zooming back in on Withervale. And even at that point, I mean, looking at this map, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of different towns and place names. I'm not going to work out the lore for all of them right away. My players don't have fast travel. They're going to have to take their time and travel across the map initially. And so I'm always going to have a week's notice before the players show up at a new location. Um, instead of getting too caught up in what's in every little town on the other side of the map to where the players start, I'm going to think about the more broad things that will affect the map as a whole. So for example, who's in charge? Uh, I'm developing a, this is kind of a mysterious, potentially vampiric countess who rules over the land from Andrasta Castle, which is up at the, the north uh, eastern corner of the map. And uh, she has her uh, sort of city watch uh, duchy police force, which is spread across the whole area. And um, they're called the Iron Eyes, which is stolen directly from my um, 
Valmon Heights adventure setting, which I put on Patreon, but uh, I'm not running that for my players, so I thought I could take the Iron Eyes name, because I thought it was cool. And uh, then I've got the Shrouded Adjudicators, which are her kind of uh, ultra secret police. That's just a small group of essentially sort of mini bosses who do her work around the map, kind of maintaining her control of the of the region. Uh, but she's not necessarily going to be the villain because uh, what I'm leaning towards at this point, and it depends on what the players do, um, is a situation in which as they do more and earn reputation, she might try to enlist them to work for her because yes, she is probably a vampire, but there's going to be a, a group of van vampires from High Vantress who are coming into the region, into Withervale, and are sort of covertly trying to undermine her because they want to take over. Um, and so there will be a kind of a brewing vampire war growing, um, which I know is a bit Twilight, but I'm hoping my players will look past that. Um, and uh, the plan is to eventually give the players a choice where uh, they might want to join the, the Countess, they might want to join the invading vampires, and of course there will also be an overzealous kind of vampire hunter guild which has appeared in the area and is starting to try to root out all the vampires. The players might want to side with them. Uh, although I'm leaning towards having them be quite a, an evil uh, authoritarian kind of faction, um, uh, sort of people who are kind of killing all werewolves and vampires regardless of, of whether they've done anything wrong. And so there'll be a lot of different factions and moral uh, poles on the map that the players can be drawn towards, or they might decide to ignore all of that and just stay as a freelance adventuring party that roams around Withervale for a while and then goes elsewhere. The goal is just to give them a lot of room to maneuver, a lot of room to find their feet as new characters and decide what it is they want to do, and also give myself plenty of room to sort of adapt the, the setting around them, because you know, I have this vague idea of this conflict between the, the two vampire clans and the, um, the the vampire hunters, but if the players show no interest in it, I'll slowly wind that down and stop trying to make that a major part of the campaign, because my number one goal is to create a, a, a setting in the campaign my players are excited about, and so if they start really focusing on trying to start a rebellion against the Countess, I'll start developing rebel factions that they can ally themselves with and, and create a system for doing an uprising against her. Like my goal is just to have a uh, to have a situation where the players are having fun and communicating to me to some extent what it is they're really interested in. And then like Gromit laying tracks in front of the train, I will extend and, and develop material in front of them depending on what path they take. At the end of the day, that's pretty much how I approach all of my, my campaign work. I'm always looking for where the players are looking and, and if they're looking in a certain direction that's the direction I'm going to go in and start preparing for them um, uh, that's part of the fun for me is, is responding to their interests I had no idea we were going to have a pirate section in the last campaign until my players started to get really interested in those piratical elements uh, we didn't go full pirate though and so of course in my new campaign there is a pirate islands area which will just be the rift water islands from my um, from my patreon again and uh, so if the players do decide they want to have a very piratical experience, they can go over there and, and have that experience. Uh, but I think it's, there, there's a temptation to get lost in the lore, the deep lore of the world. I really avoid that because firstly, my players don't want to be bombarded with lore. So the less stuff I have developed, the less tempted I am to try and stick it down the throat and say, hey, no, look, care about this ancient war that happened in the, in the distant past. It's like, no, like, what's happening right now? What are the players excited about right now? And I will develop the deep lore of the world as we go along. But uh, the, the longer I, I DM, or the longer I GM, as, I, as I'm trying to say now, uh, the more I realize that the players really want uh, an experience that's focused on them. Um, the players, some players will get interested in the lore, but what, what players remember is not the, the crazy reveal about the, the hidden lore of the world, it's the moment when they rolled really well on a, a charisma check and convinced someone to give them a crazy low price on a health potion. Like, it's not necessarily the stuff that I'm writing behind the scenes in some PDF somewhere, it's the stuff they're doing on the night at the table. And so the more room I can give them to let that stuff breathe, 
the better. Anyway, that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about in this video. I just wanted to bring you guys behind the DM screen for a moment, show you how I'm prepping the new campaign, show you what my focus is on and where I'm investing my energy and where I'm not investing my energy in terms of campaign preparation. Uh, I hope this video will kind of dovetail with the very first video I did about how to prepare your next D&D campaign because this is very much the approach that I think I espoused in that video that I'm applying here. And uh, yeah, I'm going to try to keep doing these videos. Uh, don't worry. I, I sometimes think that um, people think that if a, vi a video gets low views, I'm going to stop making long form videos. Don't worry about that. Um, I'm going to keep making long form videos throughout this year. That's where my focus is. And uh, these videos, the one that you're watching right now, they're probably never going to get tons of views. They're always going to be quite relaxed, small videos that just pop up for you guys as channel subscribers in between the um, the more produced videos where I hope to bring in new people to the channel. And um, this is just like fun community chat. And at some point I may even transition these to live streams, um, if that's something you guys would be interested in. But uh, for the meantime, look out for these little short videos in between my longer ones. And uh, also just if you've made it this far, uh, look out for later this month, the first of my videos discussing uh, non-D&D uh, non TTRPGs, because I'm really excited about that. Uh, I've been spending way too much money on new TTRPG systems. Uh, I just bought Call of Cthulhu and Tales of Zadia, which is potentially my new favorite system. It's based on the Cortex system, which is just oh, chef's kiss for roleplay. But uh, more about that soon. Thank you for watching and I uh, hope you're doing well.